Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. My wife of seven years had an affair with a co-worker. Me, a private investigator, caught her in a hotel with a guy and she denied any wrongdoing. I, 35 male, have been married seven years to my 33 female wife, no kids. Two years ago, she started a new career and has been very successful. At the time she started, she mentioned a man that she works with but said on more than one occasion that he was a jerk and she didn't like to work with him. Since then, she has softened a bit and really doesn't mention him much. I felt like I had no reason for concern. I've always trusted my wife and although our marriage is not perfect, I felt like we got along pretty well. Fast forward to about a month ago, I started noticing some changes in behavior. She was texting a lot more and never letting her phone leave her side. She seemed to have more things going on at night and on the weekends. She became cold towards me and wouldn't reciprocate any affection. And she lied to me several times about strange things. The last lie was when she was packing for a business trip and I noticed she had purchased a new, much more revealing bathing suit than anything I'd ever seen her wear. I asked her about it and she said she ordered it online, not true, and once she tried it on, decided it wasn't appropriate for a business trip to Florida with her colleagues. So she leaves for the trip and takes the bathing suit. While she was gone, I decided to do a little digging. I'd never in our entire relationship ever gone through my wife's things, but I'd had enough of all the lies. In one of her work bags, I found a drawing someone had done of her, almost like a caricature, but it was done on paper from a hotel. I also found a post-it note with driving directions to her male coworker's house written in her handwriting. I went through our bank statements and found that many times when she was supposedly at work, she was out to different restaurants around the city. This was enough for me to investigate further. I'm a private investigator by trade, and ethically, I have no problem invading someone's privacy when confronted with reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. I place a GPS tracker in her car, legal in my state since the car is titled in my name. The Sunday after she got back from her trip, she told me she was going to work at a coffee shop and run some errands. Her car never came within one mile of a Chipotle, but when she got home, she walked in holding a Chipotle cup and confirmed she had eaten there. Then, on the following Tuesday, she told me she had to go to a company dinner and would be working late until the dinner. The GPS showed her leaving work at 3.20 p.m. and driving to the restaurant where her car remained until 9 p.m. The final straw came on the next Saturday. We were supposed to watch my niece play tennis at 8 a.m. She said she wanted to drive separately so she could leave from the venue and go work at a coffee shop. After the match, she told me she was heading to X coffee shop and added a few details about why she wanted to go to that coffee shop. I said, have a good day, and went to my vehicle. Well, on the GPS, I watched as she drove directly to a Comfort Inn motel. I got to the Comfort Inn and waited in an adjacent parking lot until I could confirm she was actually in the building and not sitting in her car. I called her from the lobby and asked how is X coffee shop. She said it was good, why? The only thing I said was come down here so we can get this over with. Once she came down, she said these exact words. It's not what you think. He has to do this because he's been caught with other girls before. I asked what she was talking about and she said that he always works in hotel rooms. She said that they didn't do anything physical and that's when I told her to get out of my car. I drove away and she called 50 times. I finally answered and told her if she tells me even one more lie, I'm hanging up. She said that they did kiss once about five months prior, but that it was a mistake and didn't mean anything. She said again that they were just working. I asked how many times had she met him in hotels and she said about 10 over the last nine months. I then asked what she did on that Tuesday and she became defensive. She said she was at work all day until the work dinner. I called her a liar and hung up the phone. She showed up at our house where I was loading up my car with my belongings and my dog. She stood in the driveway, refusing to move until I talked to her. She was in hysterics, crying and apologizing. I moved out that day and have been gone for a month. We have met a few times for her to try to explain things. However, when it becomes my turn to ask questions, she becomes very upset, gets defensive, and says things like answering these questions isn't good for the relationship. She's also lied about several of the details, even when the details seem completely inconsequential. I've called her on the lies, and she accuses me of trapping her by asking questions I already know the answers to. Through all of this, she has remained constant that this was not a romantic relationship. She said that she became really good friends with this man, and that he was helping her with her career. She admitted that their conversations would become inappropriate when they would talk about our marital issues. She admitted to texting him and deleting the texts, saying that they weren't romantic, but could be seen as flirting. She said that she has been depressed for a really long time and he was good at talking her out of those feelings and encouraging her in her work. I know I'm being mind screwed, but there's a part of me that believes her. It may be that I want to believe her because I love her 
or I'm afraid of the truth. I'm really hung up on finding out the truth, but the reality is I don't see any way that I can get over the facts that I do know. So why does it matter? Am I losing my mind? Update. We are a month out from D-Day. I spoke with her last night, and here are the highlights. I asked her if she has talked to the man over the last four weeks. She said that he doesn't know that I showed up at the hotel on D-Day and called her out. She said that she hasn't talked to him about the situation because this is an issue in our marriage and doesn't involve him. I asked if she has stopped all non-work related communication with him. She said that she is tapering down. Tapering down! I lost it. She said she feels like she has to taper down rather than no contact because he doesn't know that I busted her. Infuriating. She then lied about a completely insignificant detail. I called her on it and I was 100% confident that she was lying. She denied to the point of yelling and never relented. I left it and chalked it up as one more unresolved issue in this saga. Update 2. After she told me she was tapering off social communication with the other man, I had a voice recorder in my house and left. Last night, I reviewed the tape and discovered my wife and this other man had spent well over an hour on the phone with each other over the course of at least two phone calls. My recorder died in the afternoon. I would assume they talked again in the evening, if not more. I didn't hear too many specifics from the phone call, but I did hear a few damning things. They talked for a while about the current state of affairs in our marriage, something she claimed he knew nothing about. They talked about how to use the secret phone app on their phones so as not to be detected. She called me a dick for showing up late for breakfast that morning, and they talked and laughed about a million other topics. I haven't heard my wife that giddy since we were dating. I confronted her about all of this, and she admitted to some of it, denied other parts of it. I don't really care anymore. Update 3 For the past two weeks, I have gone no contact with my wife. A few days ago, she texted me and asked if we could talk. I told her unless she's willing to confess to everything, that I was not willing to talk. She then said she knows I've wiretapped her phone. Didn't do, but let her believe it, and that I already know everything. I told her I need to hear it from her directly. She finally agreed to sit down and tell me everything. She came to my house and confessed that her relationship with the other man was indeed sexual, and that it had been going on for the past six months. She admitted that she purchased a hotel room one day before our anniversary to be with him. She also confirmed that she had continued talking to him after being caught, and he was helping her deal with my questions. She claims that she has now broken it off with the other man for good, and wants to work on our marriage. This confession came six agonizing weeks after I caught her in the hotel. I believe the only reason she confessed is due to my persistence. However, she said that she was always planning to tell me, but wanted to make sure it wouldn't hurt either one of us too badly. The damage done during those six weeks is unsurmountable. Final update. It's been an incredible two years. Keep your head up, everyone. First, let me say this. If you're in this situation and you're even remotely suicidal, don't do it. I say don't do it because if you do, you're going to miss out on the greatest time of your life. I mean that 100% sincerely. I know it's impossible to see when you're first going down this road, but trust me, don't miss out on this life. Now the update. We got divorced. I took my time in making that decision. I wish it wouldn't have taken that time, but who cares? She wanted to stay together. For what reason, I have no clue. She lied and gaslighted for an eternity, and that torpedoed any reconciliation possibility for me. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through. During my marriage, I was all in. I wasn't perfect, but I loved my wife with all my heart and wanted to be with her forever. I would have done anything to make her happy, and I think I did on several occasions. Now that I'm away from that relationship, I can see it for what it was. A narcissist crushing every ounce of energy out of a good person. That marriage was completely one-sided with one person giving everything and the other person taking even more than could be given. By the end of the marriage, I truly thought I was worthless as a partner. She degraded my profession, my personality, and my looks. Since getting divorced, my business has flourished and I've been able to date women that I would have thought were way out of my league. I seriously thought I was ugly in part because of the way my ex-wife made me feel, but now I'm having gorgeous women, much younger than me, approach me in bars. I've been in a couple wonderful relationships with great women. They ended amicably for general compatibility issues, but it illuminated how terrible of a partner my ex-wife really was. I don't have any contact with the ex anymore, really don't even think about her very often. The divorce became contentious because she thought I was getting too much of the money even though I was taking less than 50% because I wanted it to go smoothly without breaking up businesses or retirements. Can you imagine that? Cheating on someone, then getting upset about the amount of money they're taking even though it's less than 50%. That hammered home for me that I was making the right decision and I needed to get away from this garbage as fast as possible. I lost friends in the divorce. Good riddance. 
Most took my side, but I don't care about those that didn't. They made it easy for me to jettison them. I lost my in-law family. This is one of the hardest parts. I really love some of them, but I get it. I sent enough correspondence to the affair partner's wife that I'm 100% confident she knows. She never contacted me back, and I'll respect her decision. Some advice if you're fresh in this nightmare. Separate yourself from the situation. This is the only way you're going to be able to think clearly without being gaslit. Get professional help. I was in therapy for a long time. It helps. I'm so much stronger now because of it. Surround yourself with friends and family as much as possible. Make healthy choices. Go to the gym. Limit drugs and alcohol. Get outside. Try to sleep. Take people's advice, but make your own decision. It's your life. There were some really dark days after D-Day, but after the initial heartache, it has been the best time of my life. I'm truly happy every day. If you're going through this and need some advice from a self-proclaimed expert, hit me up. I'm happy to help. A huge thanks to everyone here who helped me when I was struggling. Cheers. First reaction from OK Replacement 7679. Did she tell you she regrets or something? Do you know if she wants you back? Did karma get to her? The OP's response, she begged, cried, and tried everything she could just to get a reaction from me, which she never got. The thing with narcissists is, once you realize what you're dealing with, their attempts at any genuine emotion appear so forced and make you almost laugh. I mean that seriously. There were times she was weeping and I was holding back a smile at how out of a movie her performance felt. Next comment from Sampa2NYC. Congratulations and much success on this next chapter of your life. I think so many people will benefit from hearing stories from betrayed spouses who have emerged victorious and in one piece after the initial heartbreak and betrayal. There is life, oftentimes better, after divorce. You actually caught her in a hotel with the affair partner and she denied any wrongdoing? Ha! Huh. Best of luck to you in your new life. The OP's response, yes, she claimed they were just working in the hotel room. Ridiculous. She eventually admitted they were hooking up after I broke myself investigating to the max. Mm -hmm.